Is it possible to beat Pokemon Fire Red only using normal moves? That's a question that my very good friend MNJTV decided to find out for himself with this brand new video, and today I'm going to be reacting to this. And this is a video I'm incredibly excited to react to, because usually with most of Mikey's challenges, he gets really excited and tells me how he did it before the video actually goes out. But this time he didn't give me any information beyond the fact that I'm actually the rival in this game, so I'm excited to see how this goes. But before we get into the actual reaction, I do need to say that most of the people that watch my content are are actually still unsubscribed. I know I'm all over a lot of people's homepages, so you may think you are, just check, it's super easy to subscribe, it helps out my channel more than you can imagine. And while you're at it, make sure you're subbed to MJ TV Plays, I know a lot of people just come from his main channel, don't know that it's a different channel. And regardless, let's get right on into the reaction. I'm really excited to watch this video, I've been saving it for a bit, so I'm gonna hop right in and let's see what it's all about. Greetings, Spooky fans! Michael here, and What's normal on, type <laughs> moves are the only type of attack in Pokemon mm -hmm. that cannot deal super Which effective is pretty interesting damage with this, to, to see anything. how he's going to have to get they through it. They do neutral damage to everything right, except right, Rock right. and Steel, which resist it, and Ghost, which is immune to it. Right. That makes it one of, if not the, most limited attacking types in the game. I mean... I see what he's saying there, but I, I guess for me, when I look at normal typings, maybe I'm just a little bit more optimistic about it. You know, there's no super effective moves, but you can hit almost everything neutrally, right? And since he can only use normal moves, I assume most of the Pokemon he's going to use are normal type, giving it that stab bonus. So against most things, it's going to be really powerful. Obviously with Ghost, you're going to need to have like Foresight. Rock and Steel is going to be miserable, but I mean, also defensively it has one weakness and then an immunity. So I don't know, normal types are very middle of the road, right? That's the whole point of the typing. That being said, it would be cool if eventually we got like a special normal move that was like super effective or, or maybe there was like a percentage chance that it would be a super effective hit against any typing. That's not even a part of this video. I need to move on, but that'd be cool. I can only use normal type <laughs> moves in every battle sequence right? in the entire game. <laughs> And the term moves applies to both attacks and status moves. Okay, I do like so saying that. So I can that. use growl since it's normal type, but mm -hmm. I can't use withdraw because it's water type. The Pokemon I don't know why he picked withdraw, but whatever type fair. <laughs> I want and can know any move they want. Sure. I just can't select any non-normal type moves in battle. Yep. If I do, whether by accident or because I just ran out of all of my normal type moves, then I have to reset my game to the last save point. Oh. So that covers all the <laughs> I was gonna stuff. say the so beginning. Don't to subscribe to my channel. You should. Subscribe. To okay. To start off the game, I named myself Michael and my rival uh -huh. an abbreviation of Pokemon 7 after my most vile enemy. I'm <laughs> So the best thing about this video after my most uh, vile is not only is Mikey one of my best friends, but his editor Katie is also one of my best friends. So, <laughs> so the one thing I know about this video is just getting a text with that icon sent to me. I was very confused. I did not know what was going on, but I really appreciate them for some reason including me into this video. I don't deserve to be here. I don't know why I get to be the rival. I'm here for it though. I'm I'm ready to see me get a win or two, but uh, <laughs> I do appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. Ill enemy. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're very good friends and we make lots of videos together on my second channel. So you should subscribe to him and what? also my second channel. What Step a, one was choosing my starter and I went uh -huh. with Squirtle because okay. its status move was Tail Whip, something appealing since that, that sense. meant I could make its tackles yeah, that's do good. more. Super I named game. it Turtle because Squirtle is a turtle that squirts water. This one will not be squirting any <laughs> I love Mikey so much, and one of my favorite things about him is sometimes he explains things so seriously, even off video, and I don't know why he had to explain that he named Squirtle. Turtle, because it's based after a turtle. That's incredible. Oh my God, I love this man. Water, so therefore, it is just a turtle. Sure. Suddenly, Pokemon 7 attacked. After that's me. After whip, my regular turtle dealt with his Bulbasaur uh -huh. after just a few turns of tackle. That, that's fine. A little while it, later, after Ryan we're, we're working for on him, it. I encountered and caught a mm -hmm. Rattata I named Vermin. I knew that normal okay. type Pokemon, a type of Pokemon I have overlooked a lot in the past, were mm -hmm. going to be instrumental for the success of this playthrough. Okay. While they learn normal type moves like lots of other types of Pokemon, the normal mm -hmm. type Pokemon... 
He could get Raticate with Guts, throw on Facade, and then anytime it gets status, just obliterate everything in front of him. I mean, that's one of the beautiful things with normal Pokemon. That would be really, really cool. Just in general, Raticate is... It's not a great Pokemon. I played so many, like, you know, singles, competitive battling in the lower tiers that I've used it before, and it's really scary. And once you start coming up with some fun strats like that in a regular game, these, like, lesser Pokemon become a lot better. So, I Rattata could be really, really good. I don't... Knowing Mikey, there's no way he keeps it to be Eradicate and uses it, but it would be cool if he did. Get a 50% boost to the power mm -hmm. of their normal type moves, thanks to Stab, the same type attack boost. Yes. Radita is a particularly appealing early game normal Ooh, type, okay. since it gets the eye-popping 80 base power Hyper Fang uh -huh. at the fantastically low level of just 13. Unfortunately though, I had an exceedingly difficult trial in front of me. Oh, this Rock. is... Weirdly, one of the most exciting parts of this entire run, Jim won, which is, it, we're three minutes in. I'm excited to see what he does here. My first thought was that I could poison his Pokemon. That way, they would take damage over time, even if I myself wasn't Poison doing much points. Unfortunately, Poison Sting and Poison okay. Power are against the rules. Wow. But poison Point is not. There's yes. no rule against what abilities no. my Pokemon can have. That's such a and clever poison workaround. There's an ability that can poison the enemy Pokemon oh, I if love they that. make contact. Okay. The most easily accessible Pokemon with poison point Nidoran? are the Nidorans, mm -hmm. which are found on Route 3 just east of Pewter City, which this can get them before then too. <laughs> won't let me go to. Ugh. Okay, new plan. I can't poison them, and I can't oh. burn them. There's no flame bomb. That's so, that's messing with my head because my strategy in Pokemon Yellow when I was a child, the only thing I could figure out to beat, you know, Brock, because you had to start with Pikachu, is I'd get a Nidoran and then level up until it learned Double Kick, and then I'd kill Brock, go get the Moonstone, have like a Nidoking way too early into the game. I guess I completely forgot you can't get the Nidorans this early in the game. Okay. Uh, interesting. Body Pokemon I can find, but I can do the third best thing, okay. which is paralyzing them. While that doesn't do damage to them, it makes them slower and will like give me more Pikachu chances static? to hit them without them hitting me. And I can do the paralysis by using the ability Static. Uh -huh. I got the ability on a Pikachu okay. that I found in Viridian Forest relatively easily and named it Parahax. I then decided to try out my strategy idea on the first and only gym trainer, mm -hmm. who told me I was 10,000 light years from facing Brock. <laughs> Little prick thinks 10,000 light years is time when it's distance. <laughs> Uh, and he was he was still kind of right. I led against his Geodude with Verb <laughs> okay. to test my damage output. It did that He's not even over level. It had gotten Mikey, any defense boost, look at you so go. that was not great. I immediately okay. switched to Parahax to implement my next strategy, mm -hmm. killing its attack with Growl while I hoped it would get paralyzed. Right. Unfortunately, it KO'd Parahax before static kicked in. After That's a pretty very long battle, it looked like Vermin was going to win, but then Geodude got a crit. Oh no! Purple came in and finished off the Geodude, <laughs> but it couldn't beat the Sand Shrew due to its defense curl and sand attack, oh. plus Scratch doing a lot since I hadn't grabbed it That crit it was all. huge, you needed to be able I to switch. I gave up part of the way through as to not lose my limited potions. After just a bit of grinding and Vermin learning Hyper Fang, I decided there to try is. to beat the Gym Trader I was surprised again because Hyper I had Fang grown in the first battle. Okay. This time, after it maxed its defense and I minimized its attack, I got the paralysis on the Geodude. You really just need one crit here. Vermin, who after many turns and a potion due to a crit, was able to take the Geodude down. Okay. In came Sandshrew, and I did the same thing again. Growl until I got it to minus six attack while I waited for Static to kick in. This took a long time due to Sand Attack making me miss a lot of Growls, but eventually Static worked. And okay. I had to cancel out one of its defense curls before it took Parahax down. Mm -hmm. I had to do some switching between Turtle and Vermin to get rid of yeah. accuracy drops, but eventually but I was able to defeat the Gym Trainer. Hyper Fang is a cool that animation. I my Growl and Paralysis strategy could work, so I just now had to level up my team even more to fight the higher level Brock. Okay. So after even more grinding, I took him on. Buddy, the this is the beginning of the, as his the video. You got a lot of grinding. Right away. But then it Ooh. turned around because I got the static paralysis the next time it attacked. Okay. A few turns later, I decided to switch in Vermin, right, since while I hadn't minimized the Geodude's attack, it hadn't boosted its defense all the way yet, so I thought I would get in damage while I could. This was the right call, as the drops mm. I had done made it so Vermin only took 4 HP damage from each tackle. 
I began wearing down its health crit. with quick Come attacks on. to preserve hyper fangs for Onyx, and I even got a crit at one point. There it is. After a while, I took the Geodude down. Okay. In came Onyx, and I brought Parahax back in. Oh, man. I healed it up right away, which was the right call since Rock Tomb did a lot. Ooh. Then the next time Onyx tackled, I luckily yeah, I was about got to the say. static activation. It is funny because that computer's dumb, dumb, and stupid. <laughs> I don't think you can get paralyzed with a Rock Tombing a static Pokemon. Then immediately just starts tackling. Like it could just um, like destroyed Mikey's strategy. This was perfect situation for him. Really happy it worked, but man, just multiple rock tombs and boy it's not looking great right away after several more turns one of them using a potion and a few of them with full paralysis on onyx mm -hmm. i was able to get onyx to minus six attack and minus one defense since that it didn't still use does Harden that much once. damage at Finally, minus it took six para hacks down man then i brought in vermin whose first hyper fang crit and did half okay onyx vermin paralyzed. then i hyper wow. again and it was paralyzed again He's gonna my heal final though, right? Hyperfang crit a second oh time, my god! The Onyx and okay. winning the Brock battle on the first try. And One down. making me yell in excitement. Once on route three, I caught a Nidoran male in there order to be able go. to use the poison point strategy I wanted mm -hmm. to use earlier on future rock types. Okay. I randomly named it Needle. Unfortunately, Fair. soon after, I realized that Nidoran Male did not learn a normal type attack until level 20 if I kept it from evolving, or level 22 if I let it become a Nidorino. <laughs> However, Nidoran Female had scratch right away. I wanted no. one of them to be useful right away Needle. for the rock types I knew I'd fight in Mount Moon, okay. so I caught a Nidoran Female I do like female both and Nidoqueen Queen and Empress, Nidoking. then trained it up to evolve and be about e Good you went with Nidoqueen. Queen. You named one Needle and the other one Empress. Def what's happening here? Of course you're gonna go with Empress over Needle the Nidoran. Equal levels with Vermin. The journey through Mount Moon was smooth, aside from a battle with a Magnemite, which Fair, proved okay. tricky due to it resisting my moves, dropping harshly my special defense with Metal Sound, That's and jolting me with Thundershocks. Eventually I beat it with Parahax, uh -huh. since Static actually works on Electric types in this generation. Upon exiting Mount Moon, I had the opportunity Ooh, to teach yes, one of my these Pokemon two. Mega Kick and Mega Punch. Oh, that's beautiful. But for the time being, I decided to keep those options Smart. open for later, since they're just one-time tutors. In Cerulean, Pokemon it's 7 It's me! Attack I'm back! Again. Vermin had to take some hits from Pidgeotto, uh -huh. but was able to handle it. That's, Empress dealt that's with fine. Batata, but also took some okay. hits in the process. Abra couldn't do anything, ah, so Empress was able boy, to beat it without I should have just hit. trained it a little Finally, bit more. Was Bulbasaur, and this thing... New sleep powder. Oh, let's as go, As soon as Bulbasaur. I saw that move happen, I instantly regretted my starter decision. I wasn't even using Turtle anymore. And yep. now for the rest of the game, <laughs> I had to contend with my rival's best Pokemon being able to put yeah. all my Pokemon to sleep with relative ease. A little bit of an oversight. Ugh. The Bulbasaur battle started very badly. What are you gonna do, Despite right? Healing, it's, Vermin was asleep on. and down I'm to red HP in a matter of a few turns without even being able it's to get so a hit off. Right, I come brought on, in Bulbasaur. Empress who resisted the Vine Whips. It wasn't long though before she was asleep too. There and we go. It was worse, Bulbasaur leech seated, meaning <laughs> any damage I did with Scratch was gone after just two turns. <laughs> I realized my only way to win was to drop its defenses. That's what you get so for all of your potions, brief, Mikey. Moment, I tail whipped. Empress then fell to leech seed. I brought in Paradox okay. to get more tail whips. Got a kill. Look at me. Sleep powder missing twice. Oh. I got it down to minus four defense before Parahax took a nap. I used my chance to heal Vermin okay. in the two turns it took Parahax to sure. fall. Sure. Vermin came back in, but That's was still some asleep. Damage. After sleeping for two turns, it landed a hyper. That's so much damage, Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur. This uh, did well, buddy. to level up and evolve into Raticate. After a long time switch training it against both trainers and wild Pokemon, mm -hmm. Nita learned Horn Attack at level 20, so I allowed it to evolve into Nidorino. I then immediately evolved it into Nido King, then trained it up two more levels so it could learn. A man after my own heart. You play through a Gen 1 game, you get a new king way too early just because you can. I, no other reason, just because you can. Thrash. And then, of course, it took me all of this time before I realized that it had an attack lowering nature. Oh. Yeah. But it's fine, I'd committed and I was sticking with it. Feeling yeah. confident, I challenged Misty. Needle okay. immediately O code star you with Thrash, which was beautiful. Right. In came Starmie, who. Unfortunately, outsped and landed a super effective water pulse. Oh, but I was able to get a thrash hit in. You lived. It only did about a third. 
Okay. I thought it was going to Oko, course. the way he was talking. I brought in Vermin, who tanked a Water Pulse and did mm -hmm. big damage with Hyper Fang, but didn't KO. Now they're going to heal. I went for Quick Attack, but she healed up. She Water Pulsed oh, again, Mikey. but Vermin held on. Ooh. I healed, she Water Pulsed, but this time it confused me. I was worried if Vermin hurt fight itself, through. I would fight lose, through. but I fight through. quick attack anyway. Yes! It fought through the rubber duck haze. Mikey, yes! And one Mikey never takes risks like that. That's what I love to see. Wow. Unnecessary risk just for the content. Yes. Me the battle. <laughs> Two gyms down. After training Needle and Vermin up against various mm -hmm. trainers around Vermilion and on the SSN, and avoiding all the workers because fighting Magnemites really sucks. Smart. The next event of note was Pokemon Sun attacking I'm back. again, this time on a boat. Since okay. I've only been training Needle and Vermin, they were much higher level than my rival's team, which made the battle much easier to make. <laughs> He's gonna all go on my mods! Went down easily except Ivysaur, who, of course, was yes! again, that <laughs> stupid flowering frog. It nearly KO'd Needle, Aww. but once I woke up, I won the battle. After a 29. traumatic experience in the captain's room, it was time to challenge <laughs> Lieutenant Surge. Another mm -hmm. battle Needle and Vermin were very overleveled for. Needle took down Voltorb and Pikachu without taking a hit. Raichu proved more annoying Does he not have a Magneton? And ridiculous thrash confusion hacks. Needle hit itself in confusion four consecutive times, but after a combination of him healing, even using uh -huh. a full heal for the poison at one point, You're gonna destroy healing, this thing. poison damage, and finally landing a thrash, yeah, I okay. won the battle without That's any crazy. Pokemon fainting. <laughs> it is so unfortunate. Like, I feel like it's kind of downplayed here. The fact that a level 29 ground Pokemon had any issues with the level 24 Raichu is unbelievably frustrating. I mean, the Thrash Confusion is the only way to make that happen. This should have been the easiest fight in the entire game, just with the Pokemon he's using, the levels and everything. That's that's pretty unfortunate. I would have loved to see the raw uncut footage of what Mikey was going through with this. I mean, probably a lot of anger, but that's crazy. I can't believe that happened. Next was Rock Tunnel, which proved okay. bothersome at times to do all the rock type Pokemon I had to fight, even avoiding all rock the hikers that I fair. could. But Vermin and Needle got me through. I spent very little time in Lavender Town and immediately mm -hmm. headed west to Ooh. catch a Growlithe. Okay, As are we, we grabbing seen, Growlithe? Rock and Steel type Intimidate? Pokemon are very difficult to deal with, but Ghost type Pokemon are impossible to deal with in this playthrough right. because my normal type moves cannot hurt them at all. No. There might have been a way for me to beat them using some strategy with like making themselves KO themselves with curse or confusion or something like that, but those depended too much on luck and just sounded not very fun. Fair. Before I went into the Pokemon Tower, I wanted a reliable way to defeat ghost types. Foresight? Does and that reliable way get that? was Odor Sleuth. Odor oh. Sleuth is a normal type move that not only makes it so the targets I completely forgot about this are move. ignored, but it also makes ghost types lose their immunities to okay. fighting and normal moves. That's very Rowlet smart. is the only and Pokemon obvious. in the game that can learn it. I'm an idiot. And it's the reason <laughs> I picked Fire Red over Leaf Green, huh, since okay. it's a Fire Red exclusive. Cool. For the record, Foresight is another move that accomplishes the same thing. So <laughs> you can still do this in Leaf Green, you just have to go for Machop or Hitmonlee and teach them for it. Machamp's my second favorite Pokemon. When I played these games, it was my favorite Pokemon. That's why I kept screaming Foresight, because I would, that would just have a Machamp. But they would mostly only know fighting moves, and I mean, it's like a whole other problem with the freaking ghost Pokemon, but uh, Foresight fixes all. Foresight. However, I really wanted to use Arcanine because Arcanine is cool and also learns extreme speed later in the game, which I thought which might be Which is very cool. I caught the Growlithe and due uh -huh. to its purpose being to be sniffing around to Ooh. find things, what do you I name nicknamed it? it Bloodhound. Oh, that's a fire Also, it had name. a jolly nature, which was incredible for an Arcanine not <laughs> using any special attacks. Wow. Unfortunately, it didn't have a normal type attack and wouldn't get one until level 25 okay. being takedown. But then after a bit of switch training, I realized I could get the secret power TM at the department store in Ooh, Celadon. A normal cool. type move with varying secondary effects. So much money by all of the them. location the battle is occurring. I taught it to Bloodhound and used it as its main attack. The rival battle proved annoying once again due to sleep powder. I super regret picking Squirtle. 
but Bloodhound was able to deal with it. Thanks Come to Bloodhound's on. odor sleuthing and no. secret power, power, I took down every ghost that got in my way in the tower. Well, he skipped over the, the rival battle so quickly. Uh, that, that was my moment, Mikey. That was my time to shine. You can't take that from me. Come on. After clearing it out, Mr. Fuji gifted me the poke flute. Okay, sure. And you know what that means. It's Snorlax time. In a playthrough where I can only use normal type moves, I would be a buffoon to not use Snorlax. That's true. I decided I would go catch both of them and then use whichever one was stronger. Catching Snorlax is never fun <laughs> since it can heal itself, but I successfully caught the first okay. one and named it Lockdown. Then caught the second one and named it Quarantine. I named them <laughs> Lockdown and Quarantine okay, because during Lockdown slash Quarantine, I think we've all become a bit more like Snorlax. Comparing the two, okay, Lockdown was better in on. basically every way, with a better nature come on, and seemingly let's, come better on, ideas, man. so it was the one I went with. Then Fair. I took on Erica, and it was a piece of cake. Well, Her victory yeah. bell poisoned vermin, meaning she fell into my trap. There it vermin is, guts! guts! Yes! So its attacks got way stronger. Yes! And in a okay, we've been waiting for this. Turns, vermin had swept through her there team, we go. giving me my easiest gym battle so far. I then made my way to Fuchsia City because I wanted to get to the Safari Zone ASAP. On Tauros? my first trip, though, I did the necessary story stuff of getting the gold teeth and Tauros surf. Tauros or Kangaskhan? I imagine to Tauros. For a Kangaskhan. I oh. wanted a Kangaskhan because Scrappy? it can have the ability Scrappy. Okay, yeah, an ability okay. that lets it hit ghost type Pokemon with normal and fighting type moves just all the time. I really struggle with remembering when Pokemon got abilities because I really got into competitive battling in the Gen 5 era and that's when we had like the Dream World abilities and it's just so confusing to try to go back and remember when Pokemon got these cool abilities. I love using Kangaskhan competitively. Scrappy normal types are so freaking cool, but I, I didn't remember that it had in Gen Three. I wanted this because it would be a second and I think more reliable way for me to attack ghost type Pokemon than having to use Odor Sleuth on mm -hmm. Arcanine. But then after about five minutes of looking for a Kangaskhan, I thought to myself, is Scrappy an ability that's in gen three? Okay. No, it is not. Well, <laughs> uh, he's the fooly fool, not me. I feel better about that. I, yeah, I didn't think he got scrappy in this gen. <laughs> Glad I realized that before I spent too much time on it. Instead Fair. of Kangaskhan, I considered Tauros. Tauros because I love Tauros, right. but it was pretty rare and also would be difficult to catch. Yeah. Instead, I decided I wanted a Dodrio because ah. it's fast and reasonably strong. Plus it gets the really cool move Tri Attack, which is physical in this gen. Okay. It would allow me to get some yeah. useful stats. That is true. I, I think of Tri Attack and obviously I think of just special move. Like I see it on a bunch of Magnemites in like future games and it's very frustrating. But this gen, still physical, incredible on a Dodrio. Dodrio even recently has gotten a buff. I don't know, Dodrio is very slept on. It's a pretty solid Pokemon, or at least offensively it is. That is conditions on enemies that I wouldn't have access to otherwise. Mm -hmm. Also, it could be my flyer no matter how illogical that is. Nah, on my second trip into it. the Safari Zone, I caught a Doduo and named it Bird Brains because I'm very <laughs> funny. For the rest of that trip, I decided to screw <laughs> around and actually found a Tauros and actually caught it. Yo, okay. It Longhorn. An added bit of craziness Fair. is that I found this Tauros with only five steps left <laughs> in this Safari trip. Wow. Clearly it was meant to be. Yeah, so you welcome throw them to the, the team. squad, Longhorn. Holy crap. Wow. I now had what I intended to be my final team. That's a pretty cool team. I, the way he says in 10 makes me think he's going to get another Pokemon, but this is a really freaking cool squad. The only Pokemon that people might be looking down on is... Freaking Guts Radicate, which is obliterated a Gym Raider. Leader, but still very, very cool. Of six, and now a lot of them knew strength because I had that HM now, and it's a solid mm -hmm. normal type move. Eventually reaching my next duel with Pokemon 7 in an oddly corporate setting. I... Overall, this battle went very smoothly. No! With me taking out all but one of his Come Pokemon on! without any of mine getting oh! low green HP. That final Pokemon was the Cursed Sleep. There we go. Venusaur, All right. though. It's my ace. So right away I had Lockdown give it a taste of its own medicine oh. by using Yawn. And then it immediately sleep powdered me back. 
But this time it didn't matter since lockdown had snore, allowing it to still attack oh, that's despite cool. being asleep. That's cool. I didn't and think then about it that. woke up immediately, so the second snore <laughs> failed. But that was fine, since Venusaur was now asleep, and I could body slam it into oblivion. That was by far the easiest battle I had had with Pokemon 7 since the Bulbasaur or Ivysaur Venusaur learned sleep powder. I guess it pays to have a member of your team that is a sleep specialist. There's always next time, right? I mean, it's it's not over yet. It was time to battle Giovanni again. I had Vermin up against Nidorino for a chance at Poison Point, giving it the Guts Boost, uh -huh. but it didn't happen and Vermin Aww. just beat it in two turns. Then came Needle Queen and Vermin did get yeah, poisoned. Yeah, there we go, Vermin. Double kick and poison damage took it out soon oh, after. Oh man, that's I brought in Needle for a fun Monarch face off, and thanks mm -hmm. to Thrash critting and me resisting the double kicks, Needle won in three turns. I didn't even realize came Giovanni Kingatron stronger than and him. And Longhorn beat it with four strengths, and it would have been three with a better damage roll. Finally, was another cursed Rock type Rhinehorn. Mm -hmm. I brought in Needle for a chance at poison pointing it, and I got my wish early oh. on. Cool. I then brought in Lockdown since it was my hardest hitter, and a few body slams later, Rhyhorn was down, and I had won. The okay. rich old guy gave me the Master Ball, which I had no intention of using aside from maybe a wild shiny. Then I headed straight to Koga's <laughs> gym. I led with that Vermin for a thinking. chance at Guts Poisoning, but it took out the first coughing before that happened. Vermin's just too good. Muck, who promptly minimized, so I started to drop its defense with Leer, so I needed to hit it fewer times to KO it. Okay. Vermin survived an attack, then landed Ooh. a strength, which got the KO. Of course, he can hit the muck very easily, but when I try to do that, it's a whole thing. Yeah, all right, sure, 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 Vermin sure. needed a rest, so I brought in Longhorn for the next coughing. Mm -hmm. Longhorn got toxic poisoned in the process, but was still able to beat the coughing easily. Finally was his level 43 wheezing, which I used lockdown for. After a yawn, oh, I started yeah. body slamming Poison away is, uh, while physical Koga healed this, right? with a full heal, then hyper potion. I just kept body slamming, and it was enough to overwhelm him and get the win. I headed straight to Sabrina's gym without delay. This should know, be super easy. Healing and beating all of her gym trainers. Sabrina is typically the toughest gym leader, but her Not team doesn't handle strong physical attackers. Yeah, none well. of her Pokemon can Longhorn deal with Snorlax. obliterated her first two Pokemon. At all. And her Venomoth stuck around a while due to her healing efforts, but Lockdown beat it easily. Yeah. Finally was Alakazam, which Lockdown it. outsped with Quick Claw, but couldn't oh. quite Oko <laughs> it, allowing it to use Calm Mind, so confused. which was terrifying. Thankfully, sure. Lockdown's beefiness let it tank the next yeah. boosted Psychic, then finish but, off the battle the bye. next turn. Six badges down. On the way to Cinnabar, Vermin reached level 40 and was finally- We still have a decent chunk of this video. I, I'm wondering when it gets really difficult again. I, I imagine Giovanni has like Rhydon, if I remember correctly, but I don't know. I, I'm really, really interested. We've had a stretch where things have been a little bit easy beyond like I, sleep powders, I guess. I know it's gonna ramp up a little bit, so I, that's gonna be fun. Only able to learn Super Fang. Learning Super Fang that's was huge. a big deal, and it was one of the two main reasons I had kept Vermin on my team all this time, despite it being stud, weaker than stallion, my other normal even. types. It was time to take him down. I led with Bloodhound to this resist incoming easy, fire right? moves. It was once again up against its pre-evolution, but despite Blaine's Growlithe being higher level, my dog was the one to win out. <laughs> I mean, Next you have an Arcanine. Next was Ponyta, <laughs> who I brought in Lockdown for due to its thick fat. Bounce unfortunately uh -huh. paralyzed, but Ooh. Lockdown hit through and O-code Ponyta. Lockdown attacked oh, through paralysis again to defeat Rapidash. Finally, Sox it was the so level good, 47. Level 47? Arcana. And paralysis finally started to cause problems, keeping me from moving I did two not turns remember that. in a row. I answered with my own paralysis from Body Slam, okay. which he promptly full healed away, then healed back up once I'd worn it Ooh. down. Lockdown kept at it until Arcanine took it down. Oh, Mikey not healing it, okay. who got in a hit, amazingly survived a fire blast, then ended it, winning nice. me the battle. After Holy leaving the seven, gym, man. Bill suddenly arrived, wanting to take me up, to the Bill? Sevi Islands. It has been so long since I played Fire Red or Leaf Green, I think genuinely over 10 years, that I totally forgot that you went to the Sevi Islands before battling the Pokemon. It's one of the interesting things about Fire Red and Leaf Green. 
I don't know, if we get like uh, remakes for the Gen 4 games, if they added some random thing like this just at some point in the story, I don't know, it'd be kind of cool. Just something you weren't expecting a little bit more of the game. I always really loved this part of, you know, Leaf Green as a kid. When I replay the games for like content, I get kind of annoyed when we have to do this, but I don't know, just playing through the games was really exciting. Like, oh, there's new like Gen 1 to experience. What's going on here? It's it's fun. I like it. of it once it started, but I was genuinely surprised when Bill showed up, like, hey, let's go. I did a, like, a confused double take. After a lot of long battles and many trips back outside to heal, mm -hmm. I finally cleared them all and was ready to fight Giovanni, which I was expecting to be the toughest gym battle since the first one. Right. He led with Rhyhorn, and I immediately began implementing my strategy for how to defeat it. Okay. Passively drop its attack by swapping between my two intimidate oh, Pokemon to make it so Vermin could live That's hits. That's fun. Then bring in Vermin to Super Fang. This worked great since all it wanted to do was Scary Face for the first chunk of time. It still took a while to take it down once Vermin came in due to sure. him healing, then me having to heal, but eventually Vermin got. This is a little anticlimactic, but like also such an incredible strategy. So um, I'm in between like wanting like, a, I don't know, a little bit more action going on and just being super impressed and loving this, you know. In, in, I love Intimidate as an ability. It's one of the better ones out there. But then do that, get Vermin, the star of the show, win to decimate everything. Big Not fan. KO. In came Nido Queen, and I brought in Bird Brains. Uh -huh. Both because it okay, was immune to ground. ground and because Tri Attack did not make contact, thus making Poison Point useless. Fair. Tri Attack. Ooh, it, wow. Allowing me to hit it again. It barely didn't oh, KO, though. So for the final hit, I clicked Fury Attack to save Tri Attack PP. <laughs> it got the KO, but poison Mikey. Points, poison bird brains. Come and on. In the second, much higher level than me, Rhyhorn. Okay. And I began my intimidate swapping strategy until it was at minus six attack. I, shout out to Mikey. I, he is so under leveled. It's making this really exciting and like really interesting. And I, I love that. So I just shout out to him. This is awesome. Once Vermin came in, I super fanged twice, mm -hmm. then tail whipped it twice because I knew strength couldn't KO it at quarter health. Fair. Fortunately, it landed a crit oh. earthquake, which KO'd Vermin. Yeah, However, the defensive health that. drops it was able to pull off allowed Longhorn to come in and easily finish it off. Nice level Bird there. Brains then defeated Nido King and Doug Trio relatively easily, <laughs> winning me my final badge. Next was the final attack of Pokemon yes! 7. Yes, it is leak. me, it's my time. Vegeta proved annoying due to Feather yeah. Dance dropping my attack, I mean, it's... but I was able to get things done. Sure. And he brought in his Rhyhorn, and this Rhyhorn just, what the hell, John? I began my Let's intimidate go. switching, but on the first turn, it lands on a Whoa! Yes! and on Longhorn. I brought it. Let's go. That is, so, I've never seen like a rival in like a regular run, maybe in like a Dreano hack or something crazy like that. You know, they'll do a bunch of damage, but like in a run through like this, I have not seen a rival be so annoying. And the time it's Mikey naming it after me in a, a video that is, I mean, done well because it's a Mikey video. <laughs> Big fan, I'm loving every second of this. Wow, okay. Horn Drill Rye Horn. Better than any ride on. Don't even talk to me about Rhyperior. This is the superior of the Rhys. In Vermin to start dropping its defense since my sure. Intimidate switching strategy was Come on, Horn really Drill. screwed up. It proceeds to then land uh -huh. a crit <laughs> takedown, <laughs> which did 75% of Raticate's health. Uh -huh. I started super fang to do the damage I could before it came out. Let's go! Horn drill, crit, horn drill. <laughs> I did the math, and the chances of that happening Ugh. were 0. 0.62 percent. I, I'm built different. I don't know what to tell you, man. Is that rarer than a shiny? No, but it was still. <laughs> Ridiculously unlucky. Gyarados I beat thanks to a combination of Lockdown, Bird Brains, and Hydro Pump missing. Once oh. again, I beat his Growlithe using its evolution. Okay. Bird Brains Stop then beat flexing. Alakazam thanks to taking a Psychic. Finally, it was Venusaur, and for the first uh -huh. time since the no. very first battle against Pokemon 7, it did not have Sleep Powder. No! This battle annoyingly took a what while to do synthesis, but chip damage from a Tri-Attack burn wow. and resisting its Razor Leaves allowed Bird Brains to take the win. After losing two Pokemon to Rhyhorn, 
Evil Pokemon 7, why would you get rid of Sleep Powder? Why would you get rid of what makes you so strong? Come on, me. We're very close to the beginning of that battle. I thought I was screwed, but my team pulled through and I mm. defeated Pokemon 7 for the second to last time. Next was the victory road, but nothing of particular interest happened. Let's, let's not get too cocky here, okay? It's, it's a, it's all over when the Snorlax sings. There was one move said changed though, that mattered more than any other. Okay, tell belly me. Drum. Oh. Belly drum is a normal type move that removes half of the belly user's maximum drum HP Snorlax. in exchange wow. for maximizing its attack, taking That's it to very plus fun. six. It's good That's and competitive, so and even better in a playthrough when you can use potions. It's a terrifying move, especially on a bulky Pokemon. And guess who learns it? The very bulky Lockdown the Snorlax. <laughs> I guess he didn't know what would be edited in before he says this. Thank you, Katie, because it is very funny to have the picture of like Belly Drum and Snorlax being like the, the Pokemon using Belly Drum. Mikey's like, guess what Pokemon on my team learns it? <laughs> Snorlax. I, who who would have guessed? Oh man, no, it's, it's just a little thing. Uh, the little things uh, that make me happy. After grabbing some tiny mushrooms from Mount Moon, I headed to the move reminder on Two oh. Island and taught Lockdown Belly oh, Drum. Cool, I didn't right realize after that's that, how that I was also work. taught it Return, since due to its high friendship, it was 102 Fair. base power. I was ready to Belly Drum sweep the hell out of the league. Well, parts of it. Lorelei was okay. up first, and the Belly Drum sweeping worked to perfection. I All can I had imagine. To do was we'll Belly Drum, that. Potion Up, then Oko anything in my way. <laughs> Jinx proved more annoying due to causing sleep and infatuation. It does but eventually that. Lockdown got the win single-handedly. Next was Bruno though, and okay. this was gonna be tougher. Yeah. Not only is his entire team rock or fighting type, two of the types that my normal type using normal type team really hates, right. but also his first Onyx, the Pokemon he leads with. Ooh, also counter on the Hitmonchan. That's a sneaky move that you wouldn't really think about too much, that one. And I think Cross Drop has a chance for critting as well, like a higher crit chance. So the Hitmonchan and the Machamp could really do some damage if you're not careful. Okay, that's interesting, let's see. Knows Roar, which could mm -hmm. force a switch out after I had done the Belly Drum boosting just causing me to lose it. Get Vermin out. I needed to use other strategies. Vermin. Bruno led with the Roaring Our Onyx, and savior. I led with Longhorn to begin my Intimidate switching strategy. Although once Bloodhound came in, I decided it would be better to just lower its defense and began sure. leering instead. After a bit of that, I brought in Vermin to Super Fang and strength its way to right. victory, and that plan succeeded in just two hits thanks to a crit. In came Hitmonchan, and I didn't feel comfortable setting up against it with Lockdown. So I brought right. in Bird Brains. Try attack did a lot, Counter? but Hitmonchan went Hey, that's counter, what I was saying! Obliterated Bird Brains. Longhorn was able to come in and finish it mm -hmm. off though. Hitmonlee came in, so I brought in Needle. Thanks to its right. strength doing about half, plus some poison point poison damage, right. Needle easily won. Did the Machamp have guts? Because if he doesn't think about that, that could be crazy. In two turns. Then Bruno sent no in garden. his second Onyx, which I was comfortable setting up against with Belly Drum. Fair. Once the setup was done, Lockdown o coded it with Return. <laughs> Finally, so was his terrifying no! Machamp. I went no! for Return, worried that Hyper Beam no! might miss. Yes! Machamp landed a devastating cross ah, chop, okay, but Lockdown okay, clutched it and held on. The return decimated Machamp, winning the uphill battle against the fighting and rock Man, type I, specialist. I, I do want Mikey to succeed, but Machamp is just so great. Look, look at him. He's, he, yeah, look, come on, come on. Look at him. Next was Agatha with three ghost type Pokemon. So I didn't even think about Agatha with the ghost types. Okay, Elite Four was really, really fun on this. Okay, I don't, I don't know how that slipped through, uh, whatever, my dumb, dumb brain. Belly drum sweeping wasn't gonna work here Ew, because no, no, no. every time she sent in a ghost, I had to bring in Bloodhound to sleep. And uh, Haunter has mean luck, so it could just keep you in and then you lose the Snorlax. I don't know if he's using revives at all. It'd be a little lame if he was at least in battle, so uh, you gotta plan around that. Sniff it. The battle ended up proving more annoying than difficult. 
Bloodhound, okay. Odor Sleuth, to each ghost when it came in, and then I usually ended up defeating her Pokemon with a variety of my team, due to all the sleep shenanigans she likes to pull and oh, me switching okay. out when that happened. The most notable turn was her Arbok taking down Vermin due to a sludge bomb after a screech. Oh, okay, At the end of the screech. battle, half my team was asleep and one was fainted, that is but I was never in danger of losing. The final Elite Four member was Lance, and this uh -huh. ended up being the easiest battle of the bunch, no resist. since Lockdown yeah. could easily belly yeah. drum sweep freely. His last yeah. Dragonair couldn't even KO it with a Hyper Beam, and Lockdown ended the battle with four HP. <laughs> That's chaos, it are you kidding me? Beautiful. Then it was time for the last battle of the game. My final face off with Pokemon 7. His Pidgey- It's just, it's so wonderful. A game where the rival gets to be the champion, giving me, serving me free content on a silver platter. What was I gonna do? Not react to this? I'm here, I'm the champion. I became champion, I didn't even have to do anything. I became champion of a game. I mean, he can beat me all he wants. I was the first champion, I did it first. You're always trying to follow me in my footsteps. Whatever I do after this, you'll be following Mikey. I know, uh, I can see it here. We got new whirlwind, so I couldn't lead with lockdown because I didn't okay. want to force is this the gonna be difficult, to lose my belly drum boost. I led with Longhorn hmm. instead, Let's who see. I had to switch out before I could KO the Pidgeot due to Feather Dance dropping my attack. Okay, he used sure. that turn to heal, and then Bird Brains came in and promptly froze it with Tri Attack. <laughs> Tri Attack Man. was so fun in this game. The amount of times I froze enemy Pokemon was freezing. beautifully large. Another Tri Attack wouldn't KO, but a <laughs> Hyper Beam did. Here for my bird as many superior. Hyper Beams you want to go the for. The switch battle style allowed me to avoid the recharge turn, mm -hmm. so I swapped in Lockdown against Rhydon to set up Belly Drum. Oh, I man. got scared though at first and tested a return to see how much Earthquake would do, <laughs> but he scary faced first. Then I just decided to belly drum and Earthquake did about a third, making oh. my HP go down to just 23. Yeah. I healed up, tanked a takedown, Snorlax. tanked an Earthquake. The Snorlax with belly drum is super, super cool. It's, you know, I like, I, I kind of wanted this final battle to be super intense, but Belly drum Snorlax sweeping through the game and not only just being really powerful, but the perfect strategy for normal only is incredibly cool, incredibly satisfying. And I'm, I don't know, it definitely, it's one of those things where if you have a battle like this that's a little anticlimactic, like you need to have something cool like that. And we have Tri Attack with the Freeze, Hyper Beam, Snorlax belly drumming to victory. A, a pretty fantastic final then battle. Clicked return. That was unfortunately not enough to KO though, oh, wow. forcing me to heal again. Oh. He didn't heal though, so an earthquake and a quick mm -hmm. claw move first, body slam later, Lockdown took down Rhydon. Alakazam hit decently hard with Psychic, but, but Lockdown survived and O-Code it. Like Gyarados times. dropped his attack to just plus five, but that was too plenty for me. After healing up, I O-Code it with Return. Mm -hmm. Arcanine dropped it to plus four, but that still didn't matter, and Lockdown <laughs> O-Code it too. Finally was his Venusaur, the Pokemon whose sleep powder caused me so many problems. In an act of sheer victorious defiance, I O-code it with <sighs> You served me well, Venusaur. Hyper Beam, using the Pokemon known for sleeping a lot. I had beaten Fire Red using only normal type moves, and this beautiful squad Ooh. was the team I did it with. Just look at them. What an unexpectedly cool team I ended up with. That is a really, really freaking cool team, and this is a really cool concept, really cool video. I, you know, sometimes with these, you know, challenges where I look at it and it's like, well, you can probably do it. I don't get super excited, but with this, the question wasn't really, you know, can you? It was more, okay, how is he going to get around you? The rock Pokemon, the ghost Pokemon, the fighting Pokemon, the Elite Four has all of these obstacles when you get there. He didn't overlevel, making sure that everything was still challenging. And with that, you know, you could really see the coolness of a lot of these different moves, all these different strategies. This was fantastic. I, I truly enjoyed every second of this. This was really, really fun. I don't know if I'd do a challenge like this, you know, maybe someday where it's a little bit more like trying to figure out the strategy rather than the, you know, like, can I do it? But uh, I don't know. I, I really... I really, really love this. Good job, Mikey. This was wonderful. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This was a bunch of fun. And if you do want to see me react to any other videos in the future, let me know which ones in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, peace.